It's time? Okay. All right, like, you know, hey, everyone. Um, thank you for being here uh, to listen to our talk. So I'm Ting, like, and I'm the last person. So like, you know, this is actually um, a team of efforts. Um, I'm an assistant professor at uh, the University of Illinois. Um, Taco and I, like, you know, we actually like, are working with Boeing uh, since the beginning of this, uh, this year, like, working with uh, fantastic folks like uh, Truck, like, you know, just trying to like, you know, basically certify Linux like, you know, for um, it to like, you know, pass like, FAA like, you know, kind of standard, uh, try to like, make it fly like, you know, on the plane. And um, like when I actually did like a fantastic talk yesterday, like you know, at the referred track, um, like you know, talking about like the process, even like you know, try to measure um, test like you know, coverage matrix such as like MCDC, right? Like at the first step, and many of like you know you ask like you know, in the talk that like what's next? So, like you know, when we know like you know, how to measure the adequacy of the test, what like you know can we do like you know, to making Linux actually fully certified? And certainly like you know measuring is like the first step, and the next step is really like you know, try to. Uh, boost the confidence of the kernel code just by like a running test, having like a huge coverage, and like the one thing like obviously like we are interested in is that what is actually like our existing test like status right like how much like we are able to cover our code at least like some of the core code. So we have this fantastic undergrad student, Ting Xu. He is going to like tell us like some of the work he is doing like as a side project, trying to like actually measure and understand Linux kernel test. So Ting Xu, if you can hear me like just feel free to get started. Oh, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ting Xu Ren, and I'm an undergraduate student currently visiting the University of Illinois. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to be here talking about the project I'm doing this summer about marrying and understanding Linux kernel tests. Uh, well, it's a pity that I can't attend LPC in person, but Docker and Tianyi are at a conference. So if you have, have any questions, uh, you can follow up with them. Well, first is an introduction of myself. I'm an undergraduate student from Zhejiang University, China, and now I'm visiting UIUC. Uh, my colleague Wen Tao Zhang presented uh, the some high-level uh, picture about the project, uh, about the background, and some uh, goals. But so I'm not going to repeat too much about this. Uh, generally, our goal is to comprehensively test. Linux kernel as a modernized uh, software that can be accepted by some organizations like FAA and also used on safety critical systems such as airplanes. Well, and also this is my first time giving a conference talk, so please bear with me. Uh, here, let me be more concrete about the motivation of our work. Basically, we have seen great efforts from the community uh, to modernize Linux kernel testing, as exemplified by, for example, kernel CI. So we are interested in understanding more about this perspective, especially the current practices, uh, limitations, and also how we can contribute to this effort. Uh, coming from a somehow academic viewpoint, we think that in order to build a, an efficient CI system for the kernel, we may need the following three components. Firstly is that we want some high coverage and effective test cases so that maybe every incremental changes can be well tested. And second is some test selection and prioritization mechanisms so that uh, when there are code changes, we only need to run a small number of tests and we can also prioritize them by prior, prioritize the ones that are more likely to find the bugs. And thirdly, is some bug localization and reproducibility mechanisms. So when there are test failures, we can quickly find the bug and reproduce them. So with the aforementioned uh, goals, we are asking ourselves the following three questions. How far are we from achieving them? And what should be done but has not been done yet? And at last, what can we, how can we contribute to this effort? Uh, we started by studying some commonly used test suites. There are all kinds of test suites with different targets. For example, there are uh, unit tests written in the KUnit framework, and there are also many US-based tests uh, which test kernel by uh, using system call interfaces like LTP and KSL test. And there are also many module-specific tests which target on specific modules like XFS, block devices, and so on. 
uh, we also studied uh, task suites for certain distribution like Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It is a very large task suite, but may target mainly on the certain distribution or some pre-installed packages. So in summary, we eventually focused on the three task suites, KUnit, LTP, and KSELF test. Uh, well, LTP and KSELF test are the native tests used by kernel CI. And we also uh, included KUnit because unit tests are very effective for CI system and regression tests. And we also included booting because it is the precondition for all these test suites. Uh, well, a future work is to add system call, uh, system call fuzzers like this caller, but up to now we hadn't had the chance to run it, and maybe it is not very suitable for CI testing. Here is the setup and configuration of our work. All the measurements are done in kernel version 6.9.8 and we are using the default configuration for x48, along with some uh, modules for LLVM coverage measurements for QUnit and also an Ethernet driver. We are using LLVM 19 to measure the coverage, and we are using metrics including function, line, branch, and MCDC coverage. And all the experiments are done on physical machines of Cloud Lab machines. Uh, and I think it is also worth mentioning about the so-called source-based code coverage. This is the coverage tool we are using. It provides some human-friendly and informative coverage reports, which can be mapped directly to the source code, and it is not susceptible to optimizations. Actually, this tool is an enabler of our work because we wouldn't would, wouldn't be able to survive with the optimizations with traditional coverage tools like GCOB. Uh, our patch for supporting SCC is going out and requesting for comments. Uh, so my colleague Wen Tao will talk about it at the SIP system, system with Linux MC today at 4 p.m. So please support it and give us some feedback. Uh, okay, and now let's look at some uh, concrete numbers about the coverage. Here I'm showing an overall coverage report with all the four test suites included. From the bottom line, we can see that the function coverage is about 39%. The line coverage is about, uh, well, 29%. Branch coverage is about 22%, and MCDC coverage is even 9.68%. Uh, to take a deeper look, let's take the line coverage for ex as an example. Uh, in this line, most of the subfolders are less than 60%, except for uh, IPC and memory management. And the drivers and sound folder, folders are extremely low with only about 15% and 11% coverage. Uh, besides an overall coverage report, we may also be curious about the how some test suites can actually contribute to the uh, coverage. Here I'm showing the uh, coverage, the increase of coverage by running KUnit a lot uh, compared with just putting the kernel. Uh, from this table, we see that the highest lines are drivers, lab, and sound. Labs is high because it implements some common data structures like list and hash table, and also the core code of KUnit lies here. Uh, while drivers and sound are also relatively high, uh, this is also reasonable because almost half of KUnit tests are written for drivers. And from those tables, we have some very high level observations. Firstly, we find that the coverage of kernel test is actually far from adequate, especially compared with some modern software projects. Like, as I know, Google is uh, 
offering a general guideline of 60% line coverage as acceptable, while kernel coverage is only about 30%. And secondly, some user space tests like LTP are pretty ineffective in testing drivers. Like LTP is performing even weaker than key units while having much more test numbers. And thirdly, the higher covered modules are mostly less than 60%, while branch coverage is even lower than this number. And at last, certain subsystems like init and cert is really These codes are generally exercised during boot time, and this can make some boot time bugs difficult to find and cause trouble in debugging. So here, uh, let's take a deeper look into some concrete code. And I'm firstly taking IPC as an example because it has the highest coverage over all folders. IPC is a very small and simple subsystem with only about 12 files, and it is extensively exercised by uh, existing tests, especially LTP. Uh, by looking into the uh, uncovered code there, we mainly classify them into four types, uh, which are first, missing usages, and second, error paths, third, execution context, uh, for example, whether they are run in privileged or not, and at last, 32-bit compatibility. Here I'm going to show some examples for each of the types. Uh, first is some missing usages, like we are taking the POSIX message queue as an example. Uh, well, the system called MQSend is using its false parameter as the priority of the message. Uh, a message with higher priority will be inserted before others. But uh, from the code below, we can see that uh, some lines are actually not covered. The first column here shows the line number and the second column shows the times certain line is covered. From the table, we see that line 204 to line 208 is not covered at least once. So. This may imply that all the time the messages are using the same priority because this code implements the searching process on the RB tree. And the second pattern is some arrow paths. Uh, arrow paths are usually complex and they spread all over the code. They usually features in the validation check followed by some cleanup code. And below, is an example of such arrow paths. There is assignment of arrow number and unlock operations. Uh, it is worth mentioning that covering all arrow number of a system call doesn't mean covering all arrow paths because there can be many internal arrow codes. Uh, so from the uh, from the examples we have mentioned. We want to think about how to enhance existing tests uh, and get more code to be covered. Actually, we have developed a very simple tool to select some tests that can uh, cover certain code, and maybe we can try to enhance them to cover more code. Uh, the basic idea is to uh, maybe track a certain line in a certain file and see which test actually covers that line. If we find such tests, then it is more it is easier to cover related code. And here I'm going to show a brief demo about uh, the automatic tool. Uh, here you can see my screen here. I've already installed the kernel with only the IPC folder instrumented by adding these two lines to the make file. And so the first step is to uh, run the LTP test. Uh, using this command, I will run the whole LTP test and generate a profile for each of the single tests. Uh, it will take a long time to run, so I stop it here. 
after uh, it has been executed, we can find the coverage report for all the LTB tests. And we go to check the example I was given before. Uh, for example, we go to line 204 in mqsend.c. Uh, if you still remember, this is the example I was giving about searching downside on the RB tree, and this code is not covered. In order to cover them, uh, we may want to find which test actually exercise this line. For example, this if statement. So in order to do so, we are writing it in the config file. Here I'm writing the mq.c file and also the line number as 202 and give it a name called message priority. Uh, with this config file, we can uh, run another script here. This script will ana analyze all the profiles and find whether they actually cover this line. So this may also take a time, and after it has finished, we can go to some certain folder, and it is actually it has already generated uh, a result for each of the lines. Let's take the first one as an example. Uh, in this result, it tells us that the test named MQ timed send zero one actually covers this uh, this certain line, and so we may want to make some modification to this test. Here, I've also already made some changes. This is the source code of this LTP test. Uh, the core of it is here. We see that inside the loop. Uh, it calls MQ send many times, but all the times the force parameter uh, uses the same value. It is almost a constant, so the priority doesn't change. And in order to enhance it, I'm writing a, adding a new test case. And here I'm also using a very similar for loop, but inside it, the priority is changed to associated with the iterator J. So after making this modification, it is expected that uh, the target code will be covered. So to check it, we are running a single test of LTP. Yeah, and this script runs a single test and will generate another coverage report. It is already shown here. And we go to the same position. Uh, to find that line 204 to line 206 are indeed covered. Uh, well, this is a brief demo about the process and I think similar techniques can be used for maybe task selection and also prioritization based on this coverage measurement. Uh, after that, let's go to see one more module, which is the MM submodule. Uh, MM submodule is very different from IPC not only because it is much bigger, but also because that most of the features cannot be directly involved by, involved, involved by system calls. For example, transparent huge pages. And the behavior in memory management may also depend on certain memory layout. And there are also complex multi-threading concurrency. So we are expecting to find some different cases here. Uh, we are going to take the THP as an example. It is not very well tested by all the test suites. For example, there are only zero in KUnit, one in case of test, and four regression tests in LTP, which are focusing on certain bugs. Uh, here I'm going to show a concrete example. The way of allocating a huge page here is as the follows. Uh, there will be a check-in for example, to check whether the pages are available to be promoted. And this process is uh, wrapped with read lock and read unlock. After that, the kernel will try to allocate a huge page. 
And after that, it will isolate this certain page from LRU list and make some copy. This process will also be wrapped by write log and write on log. So on the right side is the source code for this. From it, we can see that the code from line, uh, the code marked with uh, black here is indeed covered. This code actually means uh, checking whether some certain page uh, has non PTEs not exceeding a certain threshold. If it satisfies, then this page is ready for promotion. And we put this piece of code in the top and go to uh, maybe the next step. On step six, there are some very similar code here. For example, it also checks the number of non PTEs and see if it is ready for promotion. But in this time, this piece of code is never covered, though they are just the same as before. Uh, this is uh, because that the memory status never changes during this whole process. So if it's satisfied in the first step, then it's satisfied in the second step. And in order to cover this code, the only thing we can do is to change the memory layout during step four, when there is no read lock or write lock. But since it is a background kernel thread, it is very hard to achieve that. And uh, from our perspective, we think that the easiest way would be to use some kprop or similar techniques to insert some code before line 1112 so that we can change the memory layout during step four. Uh, in summary, we find that uh, we have some uh, the following observations. Firstly, we think that existing kernel tests do need to be enhanced. Uh, and secondly, we think that there are many opportunities to enhance existing tests. For example, as I've demoed before, coverage measurement can guide the enhancement. And thirdly, we think that new mechanisms are needed beyond system calls. For example, THP and other events triggering code are not easily accessed by uh, traditional mechanisms. And we also think some existing tooling is quite rudimentary because we didn't find some handy tools for test selection and analysis. Uh, besides that, we also did some study on existing bugs. Here is a demo of the 11 bugs we studied. From them, there are eight bugs which are associated with some uncovered code. Of them, uh, well, four lies in some functions that is not covered entirely. And about two of them are caused by some uncovered branches. And one of them are caused by uncovered lines. And there is also a special bug where all lines and branches are covered, but there is still a bug because of missing execution. And we also find three bugs uh, because of concurrency problems. Uh, well, that was my uh, conclusion about the work I was doing. Then Tian Yi will give some conclusions. So like, no, basically, um, um, Ting Xu, like, no, he was asking like, no, what's the advice for giving a talk? So I said like you have to piss off people like you know, by giving some provocative like you know, kind of statement, and he was too like you know, kind not to tell that like you know, so I'm going to like you know, basically say that. So essentially like you know, what um, like you know, Doc, like Tinshu mentioned like Darko cannot make here. He was actually in an academic conference, also in Vienna like at the same time like you know, about software testing. Um, and if you go there like and I sneak like you know, to the conference last um, last night and then. They were all talking about very fancy things, right? Like they're talking about really kind of you know continuous integrations. Like they're talking about like wow, well, like there's huge like you no know, high coverage test suites. You can like you know for every single like you know, changes you have like you know, basically very fancy test selection, test prioritization techniques, and you know like you know you have like you know, those um, you know like you know, it was telling me about you can even like using large language models to generating some test code that, like you know, and then I like, can be able to uh, boosting like you know some of the the, the code coverage. And if you look at the kernel land, like you know, we don't really have too much about it. So like you know, one question, like you know, I guess I have is that uh, if you go to like the next slide, um, you know, like you know, we have like you know, very smart students, um, and and also like you know, we're trying to do some work, like you know, which can um, increasing like you know the confidence of um, kernel testing. 
uh, Wen Tao is going to give another talk like in the afternoon about like hope to convince everyone uh, his patch, uh, which like enable like source-based code coverage. And one thing is like you know, we want to like actually hear from you what we can help um, as like you know, students or faculty like you know, from academia. And if you have any ideas or if you have like any hard questions, um, please let us know. Like you know, we'd love to hear. And I guess we have five minutes. Uh, happy to like you know, hear any uh, feedback. Is that on? Yeah. yeah okay. on. We, we've talked about this. I think there's a, a research opportunity. We, we've talked about uh, GCOV instrumentation. You actually can't tell where the coverage occurs because instrumentation happens at the back end. Optimization just makes it too difficult to tell. So can you go backwards? Can you take the GCOV instrumentation results and go backwards and figure out exactly where it traces through the code? So there might be some interesting research work. Definitely, definitely. There. So like, yeah. you know, basically, like, again, like, you know, the talk like, in the afternoon about the dispatch. Uh, we really want to like enforcing like enable like the you know, source-based um, code coverage, and we do this like you know, really because like you know, we're starting from GCOV and we find that we cannot survive, right? Like you know, we look at the, like the you know, coverage report, we cannot actually trace back to the original like you know, code uh, where is it actually like you know, covered or not. It's very like you know, basically pain. I think like the similar problems like even in Cisco uh, if you use like you know, basically Kikov, uh, it's really hard if you find a bug. And um, you know like you know, basically I think like you know, what Chuck is mentioning is that can we even using those like you know, GCOV and Kikov? Report and be able to like actually precisely go back and trace like the source code. Uh, that's like a very interesting question. Yeah, it is. Uh, the other one is transactionality. So, start and stopping at known points, but then how much noise are you still getting from interrupts and all those things firing? It's it's. Um, I don't think we can get to zero, but certainly I'd love to come to Plumber someday and say we're down to 0.1% or something like that and start start looking for ideas for that. Yeah, David was talking about like user land. Um, you know, like in a K unit, and hopefully, like, can solve, solve some of the problems, I think. So, that tool looks awesome, by the way, the one that finds the test that does it. Uh, when, when can we see that upstream? <laughs> it's uh, just like, you know, you know like, you know, as an undergrad student, like, you know, hacking, like, this stuff for two, like, in months is, um, we would love to, like, you know, basically open it up. Uh, we, we actually use it, like, you know, for our own, like, use cases, because what we find is that, like, it's actually hard to, uh, rewrite like, like you know, inventing a bunch of new tests. It's better like you know, to finding like an you know, existing test like you know, which actually already cover a part of code, uh, and then like you know, adding something more. I have one minute. Okay, mm -hmm. so I will be here like you know, this today like you know, so just find me. Um, we can talk more. Yeah, thanks for this really interesting. Um, we did something similar uh, in Red Hat and so, but I think a great input from you can be um, to. So the LTP project can be to provide such a report with some cadence about which tests can provide the, uh, the biggest uh, increase in coverage. So some, something like that I think can be really useful for LTP project that really need input to understand how Absolutely. to Absolutely. step Absolutely. forward. Yes. Thanks a lot. Just one last question here, yeah, I guess. Uh, you ask how can academia help, academia can help, and I'm thinking that okay, cloud coverage is super in, important because now we know what's missing. But the hard part is to actually writing the test then, right? Because, uh, and I'm thinking maybe there are smarter ways how to write tests we don't know about, like for example, property-based testing or something else, which would allow us to cover more code in with less effort basically. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. maybe that can be like a broad area where you know some input from research to practical definitely, development definitely. would help. We are, we are thinking about it. Um, one thing like you know, we wanted to do always is actually like you know, try to understanding like you know the sys caller or like other like you know, kernel further's uh, implication like you know, to CI kernel CI, right? Like so they have like you no know, great properties they can actually explore the code passes like in the code, like, but one thing like, you know, they may not like, you know, give it to you is that if like, you are actually in a CI, like, you want like, you know, some quick feedback, uh, you want to actually like, you know, be able to test like, you know, a small like, you know, basically a patch. Uh, mm -hmm. If you run like, you know, a long campaign of like, you know, syscaller, it may be like, you know, a bit not that convenient. Uh, Property-based testing, like, you know, similar things. Uh, as I mentioned, like, you know, Yung was mentioning that like, you know, we can use uh, large language models to generate like, a bunch of tests. That's some of the hot topics. Maybe like, you know, we can boost like, you know, certain things, or at least easy things like, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, certain things, like as Ting Shui mentioned, is difficult, right? Like, you know, for example, the uh, THP, which is transparent huge pages, you, it's hard like, you know, to be directly like, you know, triggered, and you need to like, you know, have some ways to tweak about the memory layout, even like, during the text execution. Like, how do we even deal with that? Yeah, so interesting problems. All right, I guess I'm running out of time, so thank you very much.